Bearded Bristol here, and I'm a guy who likes to talk and paint, and hopefully you are people that like to listen and just sit back and enjoy. If you've not been here before, I'd suggest you grab a beverage and put on your thinking cap because uh, I don't just talk about painting. But uh, for now, I'm going to talk about painting. So I've worked quite a bit on this area, but as you can see, it's still very confused. Um, it's, it's a little more flat than I would like. I've been working on the shadows here off and on, and I'm just not happy with the depth that I'm seeing yet. It does not feel like this reaches back into the painting. Um, after I get the shadows taken care of, we'll add in the rest of the trees here and some branches, twigs and things that'll kind of confuse the space even more, but also will help bring it together because it will add depth of perception based on where those, those twigs and tree trunks are. So I'm going to concentrate on the shadows here again for the <laughs> third time now. The first time was just very rough to help the spatial part of it so that I could understand where some other things needed to go. Um, but now we have to build in that depth that I've been looking for, and it may not happen on this go-around. I'm very particular, I'm very patient, um, but I'm also not particularly efficient at times. Uh, you have to feel it out until you get the right thing going, and then bam, it can all happen very fast. But that said, I'm going to start diving into the shadows here. I have a blue and black mixed up with just a touch of red uh, to help add a little bit of vibrance. You probably won't see that in the image itself, but I know it's there and it does actually help. Um, that said, I'm just going to kind of dive in here and start to make stuff happen and uh, hopefully it's successful. But that said, um, I wanted to kind of chat about a book that I read, and uh, this is not a paid endorsement. I don't do such silly things because nobody particularly cares about my opinion on fine literature, at least as of yet. Uh, but nevertheless, this book uh, was really very interesting to me in part because it helped validate a great many things that I've already been doing with my life. And uh, sometimes it's nice to have that little bit of validation. Um, but that said, the book, and I apologize in advance to the author, is Essentialism by Greg McEwen, McCown, something, something McCown, like that. And uh, what brought this book to my attention was none other than my boss. Yes, it was, it was a lovely Christmas present. I got, I got a bag full of candy and some other stuff and uh, a book, a book called Essentialism. And it's kind of comical because, uh, God bless her, she says, this is not expected reading material. Wink, wink. She didn't actually wink, wink. Uh, but over the next two to three weeks, she referenced the book not less than a half dozen times. So I figured at that point, this was no longer optional. This is something that I must dig into. So uh, I did her a favor, so to speak, and indirectly myself, and I read the book. And Essentialism is a fun fictional romp into a distant world. No, it's none of those things. It's a standard business kind of motivational, here's how you can be a better employee, better owner, better manager book. Um, but it also nailed it. Um, I've read a great many of these over my professional career, 
And this one is probably among the best for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of which is, for me anyway, it was validating because I have been doing many of the things that are recommended by this book for some time now. And it's nice to have validation once in a while. I don't need it per se. It's not something that I require in my day-to-day -day living. Um, again, in part because of some of the lessons that this book tries to teach. But uh, what this book does, and I would, I, I would strongly suggest you read it, uh, most of you anyway, uh, I think it applies to almost everyone. I think we've all struggled with many of the principles that this book falls, you know, relies heavily on or illustrates. But uh, one of the overriding things to take away from this book is that if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. And what that means is that in our day-to-day, -day, and this is, this is mostly, mostly work-based, mostly work-based uh, advice, but it does dive into our personal lives and it, it does have relevance there. There's several illustrations about uh, families or husbands or wives that have put principles of this book into action and come out better for it on the other side. Uh, but if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. And the short version of that is if you can't get excited about it, if you don't see the benefits of doing a task, or particularly even the opposite, if you recognize that doing this task is something that somebody else should be doing or something else that just is not worth your personal or professional time, you shouldn't be doing it. And I think that is something so profound in our current society where the expectation, oftentimes that we put on ourselves, frankly, but the expectation is more, 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 more. We have to do more. This book illustrates that you can actually do more by doing less. And uh, I think that is such amazing advice because I think I, I know early in my professional career in particular, I struggled with being a people pleaser. If somebody asked me to do something, I felt honored and, you know, they think I'm smart. They think I'm capable. I need to do X, whatever that is. And I did. And ironically, the early part of my professional career was so stressful because I was taking on too many of the things. And it was not until I had been a professional in one sense or another for almost 20 years before I started to understand that no, this, this doesn't add value. It doesn't add value for me. It doesn't add value for my company, whichever one that was at the time. And, you know, in many cases, it was something that somebody else should have been doing as part of their job description. And don't misunderstand me, because the purpose of the book is not to pass the buck. That is not what it is. But how many times have each of us in our professional lives, um, or personal lives for that matter, taken on something because somebody asked us to. 
and we felt honored or obligated to execute that task even though we didn't necessarily have any business doing it or that task just simply did not add value requisite for the amount of effort that we put into it. And uh, I found that part of the book to just be really validating and, and you know, ultimately telling of what our professional world has come to be. And that's not to say it's all bad either. You know, managers look to the people that are best equipped to complete a task. And if a manager identifies you as best equipped to complete the task, that means something. That's something important. You know, that that means that you are respected as somebody who can get things done. But also, it may be incumbent upon you to say, you know what, if I do this then, I have to sacrifice time on another project or another task and and which task is it that I should reduce my effort on so that I can accomplish this and uh, you know then you will find out just how important that task is and how much your effort is valued because your manager your director at that point will have to make a decision for you and say you know, well, I don't want you to not do X, so I'm going to assign Y to somebody else. And if that director or manager believes that you should be able to do both, either you can or you cannot. Um, but I think that's, that's the bellwether at that point on whether or not you are in the right place for you because you cannot be expected to complete all tasks in the assigned period of time to the best of your ability unless you've just simply been slacking off. And I've slacked off a time or two. I am no stranger to that game. I know, I know what that is all about. But if if your abilities are truly valued, if you are a good employee, a good spouse, a good whatever, then when you stand up, not necessarily for yourself, you know, you're, you're not fighting against the system necessarily, but when you stand up for yourself and say, you know what, I cannot physically or mentally complete all of these tasks <coughs> excuse me to the best of my ability what tasks are the most valuable so I can focus my efforts there um, I think in the end and the, the book has several examples too of how that type of attitude and that type of integrity ultimately will put you farther ahead than trying to do all of the things, even the things that you cannot do to the best of your ability. Because, you know, and I, I've, I've done this, I've been on the receiving end of this one in particular, where you do take on those tasks, or you even volunteer, sadly, for something because you think that professionally it's a good thing to do or personally you think it's a good thing to do and you end up falling short on that task and now you have potentially disappointed somebody that matters in your life um, but you certainly have not executed it the way that it was intended to be executed and so now instead of actually gaining respect you've kind of lost it right because you you were asked to perform and you tried and you you maybe succeeded or kind of succeeded but not to the level 
that was expected. And so now what? Instead of at the outset just saying, you know what? I don't have the resources. I am not equipped for this at this time. Uh, where you had the opportunity to kind of have an out and just speak your mind freely. Instead, you went ahead and tried to execute a task and were less successful than you were supposed to be. And now there's disappointment on the receiving end. And that's a terrible, terrible place to be. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. And, uh, you know, there's, there's really nothing worse, I believe, from a professional standpoint, than disappointing your boss. And, and losing that, not respect necessarily, but the, the idea that, oh, well, maybe he's not quite you know, what we thought he was, versus just being honest and saying it up front. I'm capable of a lot of things, and I can do a lot of stuff really well, but I can't do it all at once. And uh, that's been kind of a long, rambling diatribe as I paint in my shadows here, but at the end, it's still the same in terms of don't take on more than you can handle. And if it's not a hell yes, it needs to be a hell no. Um, the, the, the comedy factor in that for me, of course, is that we have at my place of work a motivational um, employee productivity program that is just an awful, awful time suck. And most most employees just rail against it, myself included. And I, I said to my boss, I said, I finished reading Essentialism. And I said, it was a wonderful book. But I said, it, it tells me that I should not invest time in activities that are not particularly fruitful. And I said, you know what the most fruitless part of my work day is and she kind of looked at me and grinned and she said the insert productivity program and I said yeah that's the one and she said yeah you still have to do it so this is not a fix-all for all of the things unfortunately there are still there are going to be those points and those times where your employer's wishes still still trump those of yours, but I don't want you to look at this as though it is contradictory in and of itself because there is an awful lot of value in this book, particularly if you find yourself going home at night super stressed out um, or in your home relationship with your your children, your spouse, your, you know, roommate, whatever. If you find yourself in those super stressful places, it's probably because you are overcommitting what you are physically and mentally equipped to handle. And uh, that is a terrible way to go through life especially if you can see the problem and the other person can't because then it's up to you to be able to articulate that and I'll be just as blunt as I'm allowed to be in that it may be that you're in the wrong job that you're in the wrong relationship if you are giving it your best and it's not enough or if you're giving your best and you vocalize that you cannot give more than you're currently giving and they still want more, it may be time to reevaluate that work-life balance, that relationship life balance. There's a lot to dig into right there, and I have gone about as far as I need to go 
So I will take a sip of scotch. As I begin, begin to wrap this up, I love how I can do that. If there were commercial breaks and I had a producer, it'd be a way different scenario. Um, hopefully you can see uh, the, the depth that has started to come out of there with this extra layer of shadowing. I'm really happy with where this is going. This is my show piece, as I've talked about, and I press my tape down one more time. Um, life is a process. Painting is a process. Everything is a process. And you can't skip steps. And you also should not put yourself in a position where you're adding more steps or adding supplementary tasks that don't help you complete your goals. So uh, that's, that's my final bit of advice is evaluate every task. Is this meaningful? Is this important? Is this impactful? And do yourself a favor. If, if any of this meant anything to you, read the book Essentialism, Greg McEwen, McCowan. I'm really sorry. I'll just call him Greg M or Greg Mick. Greg Nick, uh, my buddy. No, never met the man. But a wonderful book uh, if you struggle with any of those things like being overwhelmed, overstressed, overworked. So I am going to have another sip of scotch, enjoy my pipe, and do a little more painting. Thanks for joining me. You can follow me on Instagram at Bearded Bristol and uh, go out there and create something. Make you feel better. We'll talk to you again soon.